So I want to read over in the book of Acts, and I was actually sitting over there in uh, prayer the other night, and I knew that Friday night was a night that we do a video, and I thought, well, that's great. We'll just come in here and watch the video and receive a truth that's always powerful. And, uh, but I just felt like this was in my heart to share with you tonight and to close out these night meetings. So I'm going to read quite a bit of scripture, so stick with me. We're going to talk a little bit about a story out of the book of Acts. And it says here in chapter 12, it says, King Herod moved against some of the believers and killed the apostle James, John's brother. Fishermen, James and John, remember those guys? Right? Sons of, sons of Zebedee. These were wild men. They were strong. They were loud. They were powerful. And it says that after Jesus died, and we're 12 chapters into the book of Acts, so we've got some established time from the time Jesus rose from the dead, and the church is starting to develop, and Herod is seeing that, there's, that they, just because they killed Jesus didn't mean they killed the church. Because Jesus rose again three days later, and the church got re-energized. Like, Let's do this thing. Come on, somebody. So he just thought, well, I'll put a little damper on this thing. And he killed the apostle James for no reason. He did it. Of course, John's brother, obviously the church was rocked for that. How many of you think the church was rocked for that? I mean, if you heard the story that, that, uh, that somebody in the government killed Pastor Tony, Eddie's brother. I'm not flipping it the other way. Uh, that, that might, that might uh, put a little damper on Summit. What do you think? Well, what do you think he's trying to do? He's trying to stop the church, right? He's trying to stop this movement. And when Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish leaders. So this tells us that Herod was a weak leader. He was, out to ple he was a pleaser. And so he saw that the Jewish leaders, the ones who had hung Christ on the cross, he saw how much that, that pleased them. What did he do? He arrested Peter during the Passover celebration and imprisoned him, placing him under the guard. I highlighted that. How many soldiers? Why does one man need 16 soldiers? Because he's a threat. He's never broken the law. He's never, done a, he's never done an insurrection. He's never had armed people go and do things that they shouldn't do. But he's under the guard of 16 soldiers. He's a threat. Look at this. Herod's intention was to deliver Peter to the Jews for execution after the Passover. He was getting all excited. I'll just kill them one by one and watch everybody honor me as I knock these guys off. But, how many of you love the butts of the Bible? Everybody say, but. but. I'm here, you got to have your butt in the right place. <laughs> but earnest prayer was going up to God from the church for his safety. So while I was sitting over there the other night, this is what came up in my heart. And we're going to talk a little bit about what earnest prayer is. Earnest prayer went up for him and for his safety. Now, they just saw what happened to James, didn't they? And they knew what was getting ready to happen to Peter, didn't they? So what do you think they were praying? Lord, we need Peter. Lord, they can't have Peter. They caught us off guard with James. Well, we're not going to let this happen again. We come before you, Father. And it says they prayed with earnest prayer all the time he was in prison. The night before he was to be executed, we're not sure how long from the time he got uh, imprisoned to the time that this was happened, but so there was some time went by. They prayed every day. They probably played around the clock, 24 hours a day. The night before he was to be executed, he was asleep. Well, what does that tell you about his peace? Doesn't say he was up wringing his hands, trying to figure out a way to get a pardon, you know, begging for his life. What was he doing? The night before he was, that he was to be executed, he was asleep. Look at the words I just um, highlighted. What are the words I highlighted? Double chained. Okay, 16 guards and double chained. Who is this guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or what, what's going on here? 
What, what is the deal here? Why is he such a threat? Because he's got a big God. So I want to tell you this. You're a threat. You didn't hear me. I said, you're a threat. Herod knew what kind of a threat he was. And I want you to know there might not be a Herod in this earth, but there's a devil and he knows what kind of threat you are. And he's going to try to shut you down. He's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to tell you those 21 days didn't mean anything. But the only reason he's doing that is he's trying to put 16 thoughts in your mind and trying to double chain you with a bunch of lies. But you're going to stand up and you're going to see God do what he said he was going to do. And what you prayed about is going to come to pass. Double chain between two soldiers and others standing guard before the prison gate. Nobody's getting out. When suddenly, see, this is what prayer does. Prayer is all about the suddenlies. Now, he'd been in there a while. We don't know how long, but he'd been in. Isn't it funny that God left him in there right up till a few hours before he was going to be executed? That's a, have you ever felt like God's done that to you? You praying about something, you're like, all right, Lord. You know, God's never late. He'll wait till 11. If it has to be midnight, he'll wait till 11.59 and 59 seconds. And then he'll show up and say, I'm here. And you will have sweat coming off your forehead. You're tapping your toe. You're all got full of anxiety. And then you look at him and say, I knew you were coming. <laughs> when suddenly there was a light in the cell and an angel of the Lord stood beside Peter. I want you to know that suddenly came because of earnest prayer. That suddenly came because somebody was praying. That's why we're not going to stop praying. 2021 is going to be a year full of prayer. 2021 is going to be a year where we're earnest. 2021 is going to be a year we're going to pray because out of those prayers are going to come some suddenlies for you, your family, your finances, your health, this church. God's going to do something suddenly because we're not going to stop. The angel, I love this, the angel slapped him on his side. Wake up, boy. Get up, quick. And look what the next words I highlighted. What? The chains fell off. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put your shoes on. And he did. And I like the angel. He was concerned. It's cool outside. Get your coat. You, you little mortal person, you're going to get cold out there. And follow me, the angel ordered. Now, why was that, why was that angel under orders? Where, oh my God, I'm getting excited thinking about it. Where did his orders come from? Prayer. When you pray, God sends angels to do your bidding. Now remember, he's sleeping between soldiers, he's double chains, and there's ones outside. This angel's slapping him around, he's putting on clothes, and nobody knows what's happening. Come on, somebody. You see, when God does it, it's better than Mission Impossible. I think in the background it was dun 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 <laughs> The change fell off, he got dressed, so Peter left the cell, followed by the angel, but all the time, he thought it was a dream or a vision. And he didn't even believe what was really happening. Great man of faith. He didn't even believe it. He thought, man, this is the best dream ever. You ever had one of those? And then somebody, and then you wake up and you try to go back to it. Come on, everybody. And you can't get back to it. Now you start making it up in your mind. Come on. You try to finish it. Come on, anybody. Come on, put your hand up. You try to finish the dream, and you think, well, I'm making this up. I wish I'd know how that was going to end. He's dreaming, and he says, is this really happening? Then they came past the first and the second cell blocks, came to the iron gate of the street. Look, and this opened of its own accord, the first automatic door in history. Can you imagine living in the first century and seeing a door open by itself? An iron gate that must probably weigh, you know, a couple hundred pounds. 
and it opens all by itself. So they passed through and walked along together for a block, and then the angel left him. And Peter finally realized what had happened. Now I want you to see what had happened. What had happened was prayer changed everything. Peter was not praying. Somebody tell me what Peter was doing. He was what? Isn't that cool? He was sleeping. Now it's not to say Peter hadn't prayed. But Peter had just probably resolved, I guess I'm skipping out. I'm going to be with Jesus. Or something's going to happen. But in between, I saw some logs. But you know what the church was doing while he was sleeping? Fervently. They were praying. He said, it's really true. The Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from the Jews who were hoping from what the Jews, I can't even read, from what the Jews were hoping to do to me. After a little thought, he went to the home of Mary, mother of John Mark, where what? Many were gathered what? For a? Jesus. Don't you love that? Well, who do you think they were praying for? Huh? He knocked at the door at the gate. So they had an outer door at the gate. They had an inner door to the house and a courthouse between the gate and the house. So he's on the outside of the gate knocking on the door. A girl named Rhoda came, upon, uh, came to open it. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back inside to tell everyone that Peter was standing out on the street. Now, Peter just broke out of jail. How do you know the last place he wants to be is on the street? She left him standing on the street. They didn't believe her. This is how spiritual they were. They didn't believe her. You're out of your mind, they said. When she insisted, they decided it must be his angel. He's dead. They figured, well, they've killed him. Our prayer didn't work, but God has sent an angel just to let us know he made heaven. Meanwhile, don't you love that? Meanwhile, Peter continued knocking. Now, I just want to see that part. Oh, my God. you got to be kidding me. I get rescued, and now I'm on the street. When they finally went out and opened the door, their surprise knew no bounds. They started hooping and hollering and shouting. And look what Peter's like, quiet down. And he told them what had happened and how the Lord had brought them out of jail. Now, what do you think they were thinking? He told them everything that had just happened. And they know they've been praying. And they said, our prayers moved heaven. And God sent an angel. And Peter was about to be executed. And God just performed a miracle because we were persistent and we wouldn't give up. God did us suddenly. And there's nobody that's going to turn this thing around. Because they prayed. He said, tell James and the others what happened. And he said, I'm out. I'm bouncing. At dawn, the jail was in a great commotion. What do you think? Huh? What happened to Peter? When Herod sent for him and found that he wasn't there... He had the 16 guards arrested, court-martialed, and sentenced to death. This guy was spineless. Look, afterward, he left to live in Caesarea for a while. Well, what does that mean? God ran him out of town, and Peter was no longer under any threat. Because this guy was a pleaser. You understand? He ran the pleaser out. And if you read the rest of that chapter, you know what you'll find out? That Herod got up and he was doing a speech there. And people applauded him and said he did such a great job speaking. And that God struck him with worms and, and maggots inside of his vocal cords. And he was killed by those maggots because he accepted their praise. Because they said he sounds like a God. And he said that he accepted their praise that he was a God rather than gave God glory. So he ended up being killed. Because of his own pride. So I got a question for you tonight. What's the best kind of prayer? Peter. Ask Peter. Ask those that were praying that night. How many of you know that's an answer to prayer? How many of you know that's the best 
kind of prayer. So the question is, how do we get our prayer request answered? That's what we've been talking about all this 20 days. So I'm going to, where it said, you remember back there it said that, uh, that the church was praying. Let me see, where, where am I? I want to make sure I quote this because I have other things. That, um, sorry. Why can't I find that? Do you see that back there in the back where it says the church was praying? Why am I seeing that? Did they put it up on the screen? Y'all talk among yourselves. I'll be back. <laughs> Did they find it? Why am I not seeing that? Oh, right here. Okay, that's why. You know why I don't see it? Because I have it highlighted. I'm looking past all the highlights. But earnest prayer. Everybody say earnest. earnest. When you hear that word earnest, what does that mean? You think it's the name of like a puppet, Ernie or something. Earnest prayer was going up to God from the church for his safety. Earnest prayer was going up. Earnest prayer was going up. What's the best kind of prayer? So how do we get answered prayer? We just saw. We have to have earnest prayer. Other translations say it this way. Fervent and persistent prayer was going up. Earnest prayer, which we just read. Look at this one. Intense prayer was going up. Unceasing prayer was going up. The church was praying very hard. The church kept on praying. The church prayed for him most strenuously. The church had constant prayer. You want to, I want you to see that screen. I know some of you like to take pictures or take notes, whatever. But I want you, this is how you get your prayers answered. We've talked about a lot of different keys. We've talked about a lot of different topics, every one of them important. Go back to your notes, look at all of those. That This isn't the... This isn't the one thing you do to get your prayers answered, but this is the ingredient you must have in your prayer life. You must have this ingredient. It must be fervent, earnest, intense, unceasing. It must be hard. It must be continual. It must be strenuous. This is how you get your answers prayered. Your, I mean, your prayers answered, and that's what I got sitting in my chair. He said, you go tell them how they got their, answers, their prayers answered, and the reason I'm going to show you that is I'm going to show you what I did for Peter. Because how many of you know Peter was probably in one of the most dire situations anybody could be in? Sixteen soldiers, two of them sleeping on either side, double chained in the inner dungeon. There's no way out. Few hours before he's about to be executed. This isn't a Holloway, a Hollywood movie, ladies and gentlemen. There is no script. Nobody knew where it was going to come from, but the church was praying, and God was working, and God educated an angel at what he needed to do, and because of the prayers of the saints on earth, an angel left heaven, went right down through the middle of that wall, got into Peter's business, the chains fell off, he walked him out to freedom, and the, and the angel said, I'm out, I've done my job. And what did Peter do? He thought about about it for a moment he said you know what if they're praying anywhere huh? if they're praying anywhere I know it's going to be over there at Mary's house I'm going to go to Mary's house he goes to Mary's house and they're caught up in a prayer meeting come on how do you want that to be your lifestyle how do you want to be known that you're the one that can be counted on when somebody else is in the midst of a crisis that God can count on you to have this kind of prayer we're walking away from here after night 20 
And tomorrow is day 21 of, of this continual prayer. I'm asking you that are online and those that are watching that have been here, maybe that couldn't make it tonight, or those of you who said, I, I don't feel comfortable coming, but I want to pray and connect. I'm saying to you, this is how you get your prayers answered. You have to be consistent. You have to be dogmatic. You have to say, God wants this. Remember what Stephanie taught us the other night, how that that person went back and he kept on bothering God. Do you remember that? And, and he, 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 he wanted more to the thing and God gave him more revelation because he was persistent and he didn't quit. He was unceasing about what he was saying. I'm asking you, I'm begging you as your pastor tonight to be unceasing about your prayers. I'm asking you to pray for me that way. If you'll, oh my God, if you'll pray for me that way, this church will go places that no other church will go in this area and we'll be able to make such an impact. Not because we're special, because we're praying. Because we're praying. I tell everybody all the time, my last name's Trayers. Uh, nobody's heard the name Trayers. I can't find that name anywhere. You've never heard the name Trayers so you found us. And I tell everybody, they want to know how it's spelled. I said it's Prayers with a T. Come on, somebody. That's my name, Prayers with a T. That's how you spell my name. We used to go into, when we went to the Catholic services, we'd open up the hymnals. And you'd open up those little prayer books. If you ever been to a Catholic church, they got all those prayer books. And we'd go in there as little kids, and we'd rip out the T's. And we'd lick them and stick it over where it says prayers. And we'd put T's all the way through the book. So every place it said prayers, it said trayers. So all I'm saying to you is you have to have persistent prayers to get to God. <laughs> Come on, how many of you want your life to reflect this from this day forward? Come on, how many of you know 21, 2021 demands this kind of prayer? And I'll be honest with you, 2020 demanded it, but we got caught off guard. See, they got caught off guard with James, didn't they? Remember? James was killed. They got caught off guard. But you know, that was 2020. James was 2020. But Peter's 2021. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Peter's 2021. We're not going to get caught off guard this year. They, they messed with us, didn't they? They took some things from us. But now the church is not going to sit down and let it happen anymore. Why? Because we've learned we've got to stay persistent, consistent, demanding, hard on prayer. Go hard on prayer. And let's not stop or give up on that kind of prayer. My, this is my last verse, James, which means nothing. James chapter 5 and verse 14. Again, I'm going to read through. I'm trying to just show you. I have one point tonight. Understanding the power of prayer. James chapter 5, verse 14. Is anyone among you sick? Remember we talked about this on healing night? He should call for the elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him or them, anointing him with oil. How do you remember my story about the oil? Well, in, in another verse, it says this. Anoint, and I found out that it's unscriptural to dump an oil, uh, a gallon of oil on you. Because in another verse it says, he prays over him, anointing him with a little oil. It says a little. And I want, you remember that little bottle I showed you? I want you to know I prayed for everybody that, that night with that, and it's still half full. There's 350 people in that bottle. And the prayer, everybody read what I highlighted there. The prayer, come on, I want to hear you. That's the only prayer that's going to be answered. No other prayer will be answered. The prayer that is of faith. You know, we taught on faith, didn't we? We spent time and taught on faith. We've had a, such a great meal over the last three weeks. The prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick, and the Lord will restore him, and if he's committed any sins, he will be forgiven. Look at what that prayer of faith will do. That prayer will save him, restore him, and forgive him. I said that prayer will save him, restore him, and forgive him. Look, it goes on to say, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, and your offenses, and your sins. How many of you excited about that one? Oh, yeah. Hey, brother, I just need to tell you, I'm a loser. Just want you to know I slapped my grandma. (laughs) 
If I'd have tried to slap my grandma, she's a ninja. She'd have ducked and took me out. <laughs> Confess to one another, therefore, your faults. Why? Why does he want us to be, so, be such an open book? Look what it says. And pray also for one another. Why? That you may be healed and restored. Let's, let's be accountable to one another. Okay? The earnest, didn't we use that word already? How did they pray for him? How was the church praying for Peter? Earnestly. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man, a person who's saved, that's in right standing with God, makes what? Tremendous power available. What does it do? Dynamic in its working. You see, the dynamic in its working is the angels that are released to go do the thing that you've asked to be done. It's the power of the blood that forgives the sin. It's the anointing that protects you and keeps you. It will save the sick. Now, now it's going to give us an example, and then we're going to pray. Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings and affections and a constitution like ours. It's simply saying Elijah the prophet was just like you and me. And he prayed. How did he pray? He prayed for it not to rain. And no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. After three years and six months, see, God was showing the king that, the, that, the, that Elijah was in connection with God. And so at Elijah's request in earnest, heartfelt, fiery prayer, God shut the heavens up and a drought came for three and a half years. And the king was trying to find Elijah because he wanted to cause, he wanted Elijah to pray again because all of, all of a sudden the kingdom now was losing money. You understand? It had gone into a recession because there was no rain. He was looking for Elijah. And what was amazing was is that Elijah told the king, he said, listen, there's not going to be any rain for three years at my word. And so Elijah had secured himself because if the king killed him, then he wouldn't be able to pray again. It was only at Elijah's word. It was tied to Elijah's prayer. And look what it says. He prayed again and the heavens supplied rain and the land produced its crops. It went, came out of a recession. Now, th that's showing you powerful, dynamic prayer. We just saw an example of that with Peter being delivered, right? Now we're seeing one where it controlled the heavens so that a whole economy was shifted because that economy and the king was going against God. But look what it says. Now it wraps up with this. My brethren, if any among you strays from the truth and falls into error, and another person brings him back to God, this is still talking about prayer. See, the subject's prayer. If somebody strays from the truth and falls into error, and another person brings them back, how are you bringing them back? Tell me the subject. Let the latter one be sure that whoever turns a sinner from his evil course will save that one's soul from death. How do you get somebody's soul saved from death? You pray. And will cover a multitude of sins. Sin will cover, I mean prayer will cover a multitude of sins. And what does that mean? To procure a pardon of the many sins committed by the convert. Everybody say the power of prayer. The power of prayer. We are trying to understand the power of prayer. Sidlow Baxter said this, Men may spurn our appeals, reject our message, oppose our arguments, and despise our persons, but they are helpless against our prayers. 